Okay, we're gonna talk about driving. You have a stop sign. You have to stop here, and then you gotta look. You have to roll forward to the bottom of the driveway. A lot of drivers don't come down to the bottom, and we're looking for a gap. Turn into the nearest lane. Keep your turn as short. It's really slick out here, almost slid. Now, this is a double left turn. I need to get all the way over to the left, and I wanna stay in the middle left turn lane. A lot of students get in the wrong lane, and if you turn the wrong lane, you're gonna end up crashing and failing. You wanna see the rear of the tires on the ground. If you can't see the rear of the tires, then you're gonna end up rear-ending a car and not being as safe as you need to be. Keep space between you and the car. That is very important that you do that. It's raining outside, so the chances of us getting out, having an accident, have increased by at least 3x. So we want to reduce our speed. Even though this vehicle is a 2024 Equinox, you still have to drive very carefully and be a defensive driver. Defensive driving is the most important thing that I teach my clients because it's about being alive, being safe, not getting an accident, not getting a ticket, and not having you or your parents' insurance go up because until you're about 24 or 25, you're gonna be on your parents' insurance. Unless you have a parent that says, you know what, I'm getting you off my payroll very early, you need to find a job, you need to get a car, we'll help you a little bit. So I tend to like students like that who are independent. A lot of parents have the Life360 app. They're following them, they're stalking them, they make decisions for them in their relationships. And then the drivers, this kid, this guy's about to get ran over. What is wrong with him? You see this guy right here? He's so stupid. Okay, that's what's wrong with pedestrians. I'm still sliding. That's what's wrong with pedestrians. And you see a situation like that, you do want to try to be careful, but we don't want to hit anyone. But you saw for yourself how a client, a pedestrian can walk out. So I'm taking my time. We have Starbucks. People would just stop suddenly like this vehicle. People got to live with, can't live without their coffee. So... I'm trying to be smooth. I have about a fourth of the tank of gas, so we're going to be getting on the expressway, dealing with traffic. So I'm just scanning. There's a lot of traffic here that people can just pull out right in front of us. And I have to admit, it can be very overwhelming. So here's the gap. I'm going to get over to the right. Control the vehicle. Show your tester that you can make a nice turn and nice entry. I'm going in about 20 miles an <clears throat> excuse me about 20 miles an hour. Now, there are a lot of trucks coming from the north, from Canada, Montreal. We want to get into the first lane. And let's just bring, oh, there's an emergency up there, too. We want to build up speed. And, whoa. And then I want to get out here to this first lane. This is critical. Being able to get out of the no zone. So you see this truck here? We don't want to hang around. Sorry about raising my voice. We do not want to hang around this truck. Okay? We want to stay out of the no zones. Get on the gas, get ahead of the truck. I have clients that are going like 45 in the 70. You have no right to even be on the expressway if you can't drive it to speed limit. So I'm trying to encourage you to get up to the speed limit. It's really windy out here, so I'm trying to hold the vehicle. I'm gonna get over one lane to the left. You see me check blind spot. I'm holding the wheel very smoothly. You need to use this director's view to help you orientate yourself and pass your test. So I'm maintaining good speed. I'm trying to hold my wheel because it's very windy, it's wet, and that can increase our ability to crash. I'm at 70, they're going over 70, they're from Ontario. So they're coming to our country driving fast and disrespectful. So we want to make sure people follow the rules and laws that govern our country. And it's so important that you understand our goal is safety. So many drivers don't understand this. They drive reckless. And unfortunately, that 14 to about 24 year age group, you have more accidents than other age groups. The next nearest age group is around 58 to about 68 to 70. They have more accidents because of uh, medication, because of stroke, because of other illnesses. So you have to learn how to drive, learn how to be a defensive driver in order to make really
really good decisions out here on the road because on the road, you're not gonna have your mom, you're not gonna have your dad, you won't even have me. You can reach out to me, you can email me, you can message me, but you're gonna be by yourself, so I need to make a decision. I'm gonna stay here in this lane, and I'm losing speed because if I go to the left, I'm gonna have to cut off a truck. This uh, SUV, they're from Michigan, they're from Ohio, they're from Texas, they're from California. You need to understand where you are. There is another truck on the ramp, so we wanna stay in the middle lane. A lot of beginners will lift their foot, I'm gonna show you, and literally, we're waiting to be crashed by this vehicle. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna get in and out of the no zones immediately, and we wanna keep it going. So you need to be aware of what state you're in, weather conditions, it's very cold and rainy today, temperature is near 32 so we could have a lot of ice so I'm trying to lift my foot and not be on top of this vehicle I have a choice if I get to the right slower moving traffic I'm gonna get to the left lane this is the passing lane I'm gonna show you I have to get on the gas if I don't then I'm gonna make people road rage be very angry at us because we're going too slow and what do beginners do they go 45 or 50 or 60 in the passing zone and this makes people angry. It's almost like a, a fuse and your low speed or any type of maneuver that the general driving public feels is not conducive to safety like this person carrying this load, do not get behind them. You need to be analyzing every single situation you need to be using this as a tutorial so I'm in the left lane things are moving nicely I'm scanning left middle right left middle right and I'm being aware of what cars are doing I'm trying to be as safe as possible and maintain good control we're moving right at 70 that's the speed limit in some areas in this country is 75 some are 80 Traffic is moving good. This is general rush hour traffic, even though we have to deal with cars, traffic merging us, and now I'm lifting my foot. Because if I stop suddenly, and this is what beginners do, they stop suddenly, we upset the flow or balance. That car's in my blind spot. So I have one, I have a half a mile before I need to get over. Real life situation. So this is a little stress and anxiety. So I turned on my right turn signal. They didn't use a blinker. So now I've executed one lane change. Reduce speed on wet pavement. Crashes two times as likely. I'm gonna get over one more lane. And this is what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be using your blinker, checking your blind spot. You've seen a lot of my tutorials and you have, and you need to be subscribing. And look, people are just not driving at a safe manner, in a safe rate. People die every day. It's called a fatality, traffic fatalities. And we can <clears throat> prevent this by me being an instructor. Get over. And you see the shoulder check. You see me turning. Now, if we come in too hot here, we're going to crash. We need to be at 30. I'm at 49. I'm going slow before I get into the curve because centrifugal force will pull me straight off the curve to the left. You need to be listening to your physics and science teacher. My teacher was named Mr. Schultz. Appreciate you. So I'm going in slow. I'm at about 38. I'm going to squeeze my brakes. Going real easy. <clears throat> I'm just taking my time. And I want to go into the nearest lane. L-A-N-E. Keep your turn as short as possible. I've had clients start in the right lane and then they lose control, go to the left. We almost got hit by a car because another driver ran his light, made a really tight left turn and almost hit us. And unfortunately, because we drifted out of our lane, we caused a collision and then my client failed. So you need to be looking at these moments and rewinding this and analyzing, what is he saying? Why did this happen? I'm looking ahead. You should see the two red lights. A 
lot of beginners stare at the speedometer. I'm gonna look at the speedometer. I'm looking down. Avoid that. You want a driving instructor who's gonna be firm, who's gonna be strict, who's got a good sense of humor. I'm all of those. And it's really important that I support you, but also we're here. A lot of adults don't wanna do driver's ed. They don't wanna teach because young adults don't listen. They're hard headed. They think they know everything. I had another young man. We went up to a roundabout. He did not yield. He was hesitant. And then a truck came from our left. He almost cut off the truck. I had to intervene and turn the wheel. On this road test, if that would have happened, he would have failed. So parents, if you're listening, you need to be subscribing and watching this to show your son, your daughter, 14, 18, 24, 38, because people learn to drive at different times in their life. I had another client, he's 36, still living at home. You're probably saying, is this possible? Parents shelter their kids. They don't learn how to drive. That same client, his sister, my mom is making me get a job, save money. I'm like, yes, thank you. Because you have to earn a sense of hard work. If you always have your hand out, I need money entitled, you will not reach your goal. You should not feel or be entitled. I'm squeezing my brake. Driving is a privilege, not a right. It can be taken away. If I get crazy and get a bunch of tickets, I will lose my endorsement. It's not worth it. Why would I do that? So I have to go in slow. I do have to get over to the left. I'm gonna go in slow, keep my turn short. I've completed my turn. Now I need to look over my shoulder and I need to get over. And then this is called a J-turn. Some municipalities, some states, you have to go past the light to make a left-hand turnaround. I have a green. I'm going in slow. And this will definitely, and I need to go all the way over to the right. And that was a pretty nice turn. You have to drive with a purpose. Driving is not a game. It's not for kids. You have to learn. A lot of Gen Zs, are just not mentally prepared because they live in a very protected life. Their parents are not allowing them to go outside. They have the Life360 app. They're always on the payroll. Parents, caregivers, do your kids a favor. Let them fall. Let them pay for a portion of their driver's ed because so many things are happening and these clients are not able to drive. They expect me to hold their hand, give them everything they need, and I simply can't do it. I'm a coach, I'm a teacher, I enjoy what I do. At the same time, oh man, yes, at the same time, you have to be able, so driving teaches you that adult responsibility, and that's really important. Okay, what I did, I went in and got the registration, right? There are a lot of teens and adults who don't know how to do this. You have to go in and pay. So if you're over 18, you're gonna to have to go to the Secretary of State. You're gonna to have to take a test. It's called a temporary instruction permit. Uh, the test can cost $20, $22, $25. It varies from state to state. You have to pass this test and then you're gonna get a temporary instruction permit, TIP. Then you gotta drive with someone over 21. I get a lot of comments, well, I don't know what to do. No one can help me. I don't have a job. Where are you gonna be that 19, that 20, 23, 25, 27, 30 year old person and you wanna drive, but yet you don't have a job. You're on your mom and dad's payroll. So this is sad, but this is true. And this is where we are today. What is the cure? You have to stop for a second you gotta get a job. You gotta take that personal responsibility. If you need to walk to a fast food restaurant, if you need to do childcare, you need to do social media, whatever you need to do to get an income coming in, you have to do that. You can't rely on your parents because your parents simply, they brought you in this world and they're gonna take you out. A lot of parents will just uh, color you until you're like freaking 45. You live in your mom or dad's basement. You've got to stop this and become independent. Most teens after high school, they go to college or go to trade school. There are a lot of teens post COVID 
who are that 19, 23, 24, and they're just at home, and mom and dad just open up the purse, open up the wallet, and just give them money. You gotta be able to know how to get your registration. You gotta be able to know how to get your tag for your vehicle. Um, and I can do some tutorials on that to help you bridge that gap. And then someone in your family should help you. That's what family's about. My uncle helped me, my cousins helped me learn how to drive, drive around. So now I'm putting on my seatbelt again. Remember, I just left the Secretary of State. Uh, there are three ways to get your um, registration. It could be done by mail, uh, it could be done online, or in person at the kiosk. So it was $169. It varies on the type of car you have, registration, all this. I had an SRT truck, it was $305. I hated that every year, but you have to pay that, okay? You have to have your proper tax. In the state I'm in, we just need one license plate on the back. Some states require two. So we have the registration. So whoever owns the vehicle, every year it expires. So the owner of this vehicle, the tag has expired. So technically I could get pulled over, but because I'm being responsible, I got the registration. I got the new tag. This is good to May of 2025. Okay, it's 2024. So schools used to do driver's education and I'm a big proponent of that. We need to bring that back. There are a lot of good third parties. I've done it for schools and also also done it for third parties, okay? So um, you've got your tag. We got what we need. So now I gotta go pick up the client. The car's in neutral. Now it's in drive. So I gotta look, so I'm gonna pull through. In fact, no, I'm gonna reverse to show you. So I'm in reverse. I'm looking left and right. And trust me, you hate going to Secretary of State. And I'm looking, you see me turning the wheel? Looking, okay. And the Secretary of State, there's so many things you do here. So now all of these people are waiting. Thank God I was able to get in. And it could be two hours, three hours, four hours. If you get your original operator's license, that's where you're gonna have to go. Okay, you gotta do all that information. So now I'm just scanning the parking lot, being careful, looking. And I want to be safe. Safety is no accident. And I'm watching for these pedestrians, looking around. And you have to have good eye movement. And that's what you want to do. Also, the next thing, we drive on the right. I've had clients go out the wrong exit. And I'm saying to myself, what are you doing? You need to know where your attendant path of travel is. So I'm coming up. Traffic is to the left. I have a gap. I got to get all the way over to the left. A lot of students will forget left and right side. Okay, this is my left hand, this is my right hand. So left is down on the blinker, up is right. So I'm set, I'm waiting for the light, I'm going to uh, do some general driving, get in an expressway. You can use this as a tutorial to help you learn how to drive. So I'm scanning left and right on your test. If you don't look around, you will be marked down. People run lights. Don't assume anything. And if you don't know how to read, I can put together a tutorial and put together an ebook on road signs. And I've had some requests and I will do that. So I have to get over to the left lane. And this is called a J turn. This is the long part of the J. And then I have to go up and stop. And I want to be on the outside of the J. Here's another area where students crash. All right, I'm on the right side, I'm checking traffic. I can turn a red, but I have to stop and look. So you see me looking to my right. I can't really see the gap real good. There's a clear gap. I'm gonna go. And then I go all the way over to the right. And at the light, we'll make a right. You see warning signs, bicycle, you see guide signs. You gotta know how to read that and every state has custom signs based upon the municipality that they have, but they are general signs that all areas across the United States have. I've been through Canada, Montreal before, and I will do some tutorials on that. Okay, so I'm stopped behind the line. I can turn on red, but I have to come up and look. This is where a lot of beginners fail. And I'm just gonna wait because I'm at zero speed, they're at 50, they're at 60. I'm still gonna wait. 
If you don't look to the left, just like I'm looking, this is a major element. I need you to listen to me. If you don't look to the left and check traffic, now it's clear. I'm gonna go in the first lane and then I accelerate. You will pull out in front of traffic. That is a major driving error and you will fail. So we have broken white lines. This means we can change lanes in either direction. We got our edge line to the right. So if our car broke down, we can pull over to the right off of the road. So I'm trying to maintain the speed limit. I'm looking ahead. Next, beginners. And a beginner is anyone with less than 10 years of experience. So if you're 16 watching this, 26. If you are 17 watching this, 27, 18, 28. It takes 10 years to become a master. I know what you're saying, 10 years, really? I, I'm just driving one year. You haven't been in a snowstorm. You haven't driven in a flood. You haven't driven in the summertime driving to Texas, which is over 21 hours. You haven't driven to LA. You understand what I'm saying? You haven't driven to New York. These drives will build you and give you that driving endurance. So I stop behind the line. I check my mirrors. There's no one behind me. I don't want to be rearing it. I'm looking to the left, looking to the right. I want to have space uh, left, middle, right, and I'm just looking. My foot's on the brake. You need to learn to examine cars in your driving environment. That's the Jaguar. Even if you didn't know the type of car, you need to know what type of car it is, what are the capabilities, who's driving it. If you see someone in a Charger Hellcat, or a Cobra Mustang, more high performance vehicles, they will, and I'm gonna make a lane change, I'm gonna show you some actual real driving. So I made that lane change, and I back up to speed, it is 55, so I'm gonna pass this vehicle because I don't wanna play, and then I'm gonna get back over one lane to the right. So you saw me make that lane change, and that's the way it should be, a smooth, fluent motion, but a lot of beginners will put their foot on the brake, they'll jerk the wheel. Now I'm gonna squeeze my brakes and just go really slow. Don't run lights. Because if you run a light, you're gonna fail your driving test. There's so much value here. And if you're giving value right now, give it a thumbs up, give it a follow, give it a like. So I'm behind the stop line again, I'm scanning. There is the black car behind me, the Jaguar. They're really too close because I can't see the rear of their tires the front of their tires, so I feel uncomfortable. If they got hit, they would hit me. I'm looking left and right, and then I gradually. Also, some clients really are heavy-footed. They'll hit the gas real hard, will spin and break traction. It's not funny because it's very dangerous. And myself as an instructor, this is telling me you're reckless and you will be marked down. So that's scary coming over, so I need to get over to the right. Broken white line. Now I'm going on a clover leaf. And a clover leaf is a really sharp curve and I'm squeezing my brakes. And you have to have 125 cc motor or bigger to go on an expressway. If you're under a dirt bike, some small, you, you can't maintain speed. So I'm in between. And this is a really good type of tutorial right now because this is where students really earn that grit, G-R-I-T. And now I accelerate and I look over my shoulder and I have to catch up to traffic. And I'm at 60 coming out. That was okay. I don't wanna be behind the truck. I'm gonna get over one lane to the left. And you see me gradually turning, getting into that middle lane, getting away from this truck. The no zones, left side, right side, front and back. Stay away from trucks. Stay away from larger vehicles that have bigger blind spots. So I'm in the middle lane, everything's smooth, but I'm gonna get over one more lane. I have clients practice making lane, which you should be doing when you look at this video at home on your device or wherever you are in the world. Thank you for looking at it. You need to pretend you're driving and I'm gonna get over one lane to the right. And I'm good. I do not wanna be behind them with the ladders and the other material. So I'm maintaining good speed right now. It is very windy out here. 
So I'm just trying to hold the wheel ever so gently and just take my time. Man, it's so windy out here. So I'm trying to be smooth as possible. And you don't want to, I had another client just turning the wheel right, turning the wheel left, we're all over the road. I told the young man, don't squeeze the wheel so hard. He wasn't listening to me. He was very nervous, very scared. So I'm just trying to support him. And I need to get over one lane to the right. You saw me check my blind spot. And you cancel it once you're in the lane. So speed is pretty good. Uh, when you go over the bridges, it could be frozen because bridges are elevated. And you're getting some test prep right now for your knowledge that you remember I talked to you about what's on your TIP test. Don't worry, I'm gonna put together an ebook and then put it on the stand site because I have people who have a lot of questions. Okay, I'm gonna get over one lane. And then you see me checking the blind spot. I was a little close to the truck, but I got there. And I'm trying to be as smooth as possible, stay with the flow, but not tailgate. And if you notice, all of us are getting over to the right, to the middle lane, and that's what you should do. Okay, but what if I wanna drive on the left? If you drive on the left, that's fine. But technically, to keep the flow of traffic moving, you should be in the middle lane. I'm gonna get over one more lane to the right. You see a lot of lane changes today, and that's definitely gonna help you in good control. So I'm gonna lift my foot, keep my space, take my time. It's still very windy out here, and now I see cars to the right. So I'm maintaining my speed and position. I'm leaving room, I'm actually off the gas to allow room just in case this driver needs to come out. And we don't see a blinker. See, I don't see anything. If you did that on your road test, I would mark you down. It's a small thing that means a lot to engage positivity for success. I'm off the gas and I'm trying to keep my vehicle a square and you can see the video out front. You can see me looking and checking traffic. And I'm going up real easy, real slow. If I go too fast, I'm gonna be in the ditch. Now, I've had clients put the car in the ditch because they're not listening to me and they're going in too fast. Now you squeeze the brakes. So centrifugal force does not pull us off the curve. And then I'm gonna squeeze my brakes. I wanna see the rear of the tires on the ground. So they have on the left blink, they have on the left blinker, they're going left. I'm confused by this vehicle. Are they going to the right lane, the red uh, vehicle? So that's confusing to us. So you don't want to assume, if you assume, it makes an ass out of you and me. You don't believe me, ask your mom, ask your dad, ask your uncle who cares about you. I'm your uncle who cares about you. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to listen to you. I'm not going to judge you. We all need someone to support us and listen to us. Okay. And I go in the nearest lane by the double yellow, and then I accelerate out. And I'm looking ahead because I want to be a defensive driver. It's about vision. You see me looking ahead, now I'm lifting my foot because this black truck is not moving real fast. So far so good, scanning, be patient. So you have to go with the flow, you have to take your time, you must be patient. We'll be velocitized. That's the sensation of going slower than you actually are. The speed limit here is 50. We were at 70. And then I have to get into the middle turn lane. You want to get in just before the street. This is a really good tutorial. I hope you uh, like it. So I'm going to yield. And then I'm going to make my turn. Keep your turn short. Go in slow. Now we're in a residential. And on your road test, you're going to residential. So speed limits might be 15. The max speed is 25. I have a tutorial on that. I'm going to redo it. And then I'll put it on stand store as a complete lesson. And then we'll figure out the price and I'll post something on the channel and ask your opinion. So I want to come to a complete stop for three seconds. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. 
you're probably saying, you don't really, I do drive like this because I'm an instructor and I go in slow to my turn. And it feels good if you're learning how to drive, becoming independent. Your parents will see this independence and they may help you or they may not help you. So I'm coming up and I'm looking, defensive driving, kids, people, walking, taking my time, going really slow and be patient. That was pretty good. I'm gonna show you a parallel park. For teaching purposes, we're gonna go ahead and turn our eye four ways. Okay, because I'm an instructor, I have to walk it like I talk it. Okay, I'm about uh, four feet away. I go in reverse, I roll straight back, and then I turn my wheel all the way to the right. And then I turn my wheel back all the way to the left. I'm checking, and that's a pretty good parallel park. You need to be able to do this for your road test. Let's review. We talked about personal responsibility. Going to the Secretary of State, if you're 18, you had to get your TIP. We showed you how to merge on the expressway, how to get and make lane changes, how to be that defensive driver. I've talked about putting together some eBooks on driver's education, uh, putting that up on Stand Store, really trying to bring you good value. If you wanna jump on a car with me, we'll set that up. We'll figure out the price point, and then I'll be doing some driver's education virtual classes. If you need help or assistance, uh, setting a plan up to go to Secretary of State or take driver's ed, because a lot of people don't know where to start. But I want to be the one to help you and bring you in. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will be putting this up very soon. Bye.